Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Body Podcast, the intersection of physical and financial success. I'm Nate Palmer. If you're here, you're probably because you're a high performer, a business owner, entrepreneur, or a busy dad that's interested in gaining an unfair advantage in life using fitness and nutrition as force multipliers. If you're not already a part of the Facebook group, definitely go to n8trainingsystems.com slash group to join us there. There's a ton of cool stuff happening, well, as well as a mass amount of free resources and information. Again, go to natetrainingsystems.com slash group to join us there. I'm super excited though today because we are talking to Dr. Mike DeBoard of B3 Sciences. Dr. Mike is going to blow our minds with one of the most like popular with um, training implements that has had a meteoric rise in the last several years as more information has come out about um blood flow restriction training or BFR training. So Dr. Mike, super excited to have you here. Really pumped to be able to get some of your wisdom and information around BFR. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Nate. I'm excited to share this technology with everyone. Awesome. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself? How, like, where were you before? And then what have you been, um, how has everything been going with, with as a, the president and founder of B3 Technologies? Yeah, I was a sports chiropractor. So being certified, I treat a lot of athletes. I had the opportunity to meet Dr. Jim Stray Gunderson, who's one of the top Olympic training doctors in the world. He's been both European and recently he's been out of Park City with the Bodie Millers and the Lindsey Vons and, and that crowd. And he called me, <clears throat> I remember from Japan and said, Hey, Mike, you ever heard of blood flow restriction training? This was like 2013. He said, we figured out what the Japanese were doing. We thought they were doping. We're trying to catch them doping. And here they're doing this de technique and they're not telling anybody. He, he got to be friends with Dr. Sato, who's the godfather of BFR. And maybe when we go into the history, we'll talk about how he stumbled on this back in the 60s. And then he, he perfected it. But through that friendship, I got to try BFR when it came here from Japan there was a expensive Japanese device called Katsu and loved it and at, that, and at this time I'd already retired from chiropractic I moved on I, I got into running and managing network marketing companies nutrition based holistic based stayed in the fitness arena and a lot of the conversation Dr. Jim and I had was hey how can we market this and the Katsu system just wasn't marketable in the United States. Dr. Jim had perfected in his athletes, but then he had a partner and they had developed another really cool device called the Alter G treadmill. A lot of your listeners may have heard it's this anti-gravity treadmill. Well, Sean's Wayland's family developed that. So they already had this cool air bladder technology. So they set out to solve some challenges that there was with this Japanese device and they developed these bands, you know, the B3 bands, and made it so they're affordable, easy to use, comfortable, safe, patented, and just made it so that everybody from an eight-year-old kid to a 90 year old grandma to a doctor to an Olympic level athlete to a pro bodybuilder can take advantage of it. And once he developed that, I decided to start a company to help mass market this around the world. Hence, you're now seeing B3 Sciences, we're coming up on about two years. We've got about 15,000 people using the bands. We got Mark Wahlberg, we got Nick Cannon, we got the Kansas City Chiefs, Los Angeles Clippers, Dr. Mercola, Dr. Oz. I mean, we're really starting to see very influential people like yourself that are saying, hey man, there's, there's something to this. And now I think what we're gonna see, like you said, this meteoric rise, over the next two to three years, everybody's going to see this. Doctors are going to be prescribing it. Um, gyms are going to be teaching classes on it. You know, grandmas are going to be out walking their dogs with it. So, I mean, it is, like you said, just recently, three weeks ago, Chris Helmsworth, God of Thunder, posted on his Instagram, doing BFR. This is how he's building his guns. So, you know, it's, it's really exciting what's about to happen with this technology. Yeah, it's cool. And I feel like with a lot of times, like with bodybuilding, health and fitness, those technologies that come out and they're like, oh, brand new, something really crazy. It's the Hawaii chair. It's, you know, it's this, it's BOSU or whatever. And they're just like kind of old takes on, or like new takes on old things that have not really yes. ever 
even been proven. And then you see someone doing it on the gram, you know, doing some crazy exercise and you're like, but that's not, is that really how you did it? So I'm really excited about BFR technology because of all the science and the history and stuff. So I want to talk a little bit more about like the kind of the differentiate between how bodybuilders are using this versus how people are using it for the rehab protocols. But before we do that, can we talk about Dr. Sato and kind of his research in the sixties and how that's led to this, this new technology? Well, the first thing people need to understand is it, it, it's, uh, we take BFR, which is very simple and, and we tend to make it complicated. Here's the simplicity of it. If you look at my hands here, you have oxygen flowing in your muscles, which is the primary source of fuel. You walk, you bike, you elliptical, you do everything except the super heavy weight and you're using oxygen, okay? The goal of exercise is to use more oxygen than's flowing. So that's called your flow rate a 10. If you exercise at a five, a six, a seven, eight, or a nine, you never exceed available oxygen. Perfect example, Forrest Gump went for a run. Remember Forrest, box of chocolates? How far did he run? He All just the kept way. Running. All the way, why? He's using less oxygen than is flowing. He can go forever. This is where most people exercise. That's why you walk in the gym and you, you, you go out to the park and you see all these people doing this aerobic exercise. None of them look like you and me, Nate. They don't have six packs. They don't have guns. And, and, they are, and they're always overweight. Why? They're never using enough oxygen to flip the scale push themselves into an oxygen deficit, which turns on fast twitch muscles and produces lactic acid. How do all of our listeners know when that's happening? It's very simple. If you use more oxygen than's flowing, let's imagine that you're using oxygen 11, then you'll very quickly feel the burn. It's that simple. If you feel the burn, your muscles are out of oxygen, and you're now going anaerobic, you're burning muscle glycogen and you're dropping lactic acid or lactate and you're gonna get growth hormone and you're gonna change. That's all exercise is. And I like what you said earlier. All we've done for 30 or 40 years is we just regurgitate over here. You know, Pilates, cross. We, we just regurgitate the same old thing, which is movement. Movement is not adaptative exercise. Exercise only causes adaptation when you use more oxygen than it's flowing. Ingenious idea Sato came up with. What if instead of your oxygen flowing at a 10, we bring it down to a five? Now your oxygen's flowing at a five. You're going for a walk, that's a six. You're on the elliptical, that's a seven. You're doing light exercise, lightweight, rebounder, vibration plate, yoga, playing pickleball, mowing the yard, water aerobics. All things that would never in a million years create an oxygen deficit to get lactic acid are now creating this mismatch because you've only got half the oxygen and you're going for a walk or you're on the rebounder or you're in the water and you're feeling a burn in your muscles like you're doing five times the amount of work. And that burn is basically what most people think is lactic acid. Let's not get real technical and call it, you know, hydrogen ion. No, hey, you're right. You're dropping lactic acid. The pH is dropping in your muscle. More important is this. Your brain is paying attention to that lactic acid. Your brain doesn't say, Nate, whoa, dude, that's a lot of weight. Man, I'm going to give you growth hormone. Your brain doesn't go, Nate, man, I'm going to reward you, dude. 45 minutes on, you know, on the Peloton. Brain doesn't care. Your brain only cares if you start creating lactic acid or lactate. That's the trigger that goes up this efferent nerve pathway right here to the brain and gives you growth hormone. So BFR, very simply, it's a matter of slowing down blood flow so that you have less oxygen so that you can work out at a level that your body can tolerate, but creates that oxygen mismatch. Now you got circulating lactate, you know it because you feel the burn, and you're going to get growth hormone. And for people who are already getting it, like me and you, Nate, it's more growth hormone. For people who aren't, for people who aren't getting it, we're talking about turning growth hormone on, which is a massive game changer for the average person. 
Yeah. The amount of like the amount of the results you're going to see, the amount of healing you're going to get from that. And I think that like, if you're listening to this and you, if you've been to the gym before, you've done a set of bicep curls and you've taken it to failure, you know, what the burn feels like you also know the intensity it takes to get there. Right. Like I always tell my clients, Dr. Mike, like, Hey, it's really not about the first like eight, 10 reps. It's those mm-hmm. last two to three reps when you're really, that's, like, about. that's where you, cause you gotta, you gotta buy in first, right. You can put your chips on the table. And then when you stop at rep 10, when you had three more reps in the tank, like you left all those gains on the table. So what you're telling me is that BFR lowers the buy-in. So now, now you don't yeah. have to use the, the heaviest weights. You don't have to go hundred percent to like your like last possible rep because the threshold has been lowered as to yeah. what is going to give you results. And honestly, it sounds too good to be true, right? Yeah. That I can exactly. get results from walking and mowing the yard, you know, that I can get results using half the weight and half the time. Like, yeah. that, you know, in a, in a, in a industry where we're being sold BS all the time from supplement companies, you know, this sounds like it's too good to be true. Can you tell us like why, like why this is not too good to be true and why this, like the science or like some of the results that you're seeing from this? I'm a huge, well, number, I'm a huge believer. I'm just wanted to I right. just know where people's minds are going to go. Number one, it, it's not doing anything foreign to your body. It's not even tricking your body. You're just by, it's like a biohack. You're going to tap in to what the body is designed to do. So it's not dangerous, it's not unsafe, it's not foreign, it's exactly how you are designed as a human being to thrive. You are designed to get growth hormone. We were hunters, we were gatherers, we were, we were meant to build and gather and run and sprint and jump. Those bursting exercises is what the human body thrives on. So number one, this is exactly how your body is designed to thrive. Number two, this isn't a fad. This isn't Billy Blanks and Tybo. This isn't, you know, the shake weight thing. Remember that crazy thing? This is, yeah, over 500 documented studies, peer reviews, case studies all over the world, all over the world. There is, I haven't met one doctor and, and doctors are always a little bit skeptical and rightfully so. And then they read the research they're like, wow, I, I, I guess it works. I, 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 I should try it. And, and that's where we're at. We are, we are at the point where it's scientifically sound. It can't be argued with. I love this also because it didn't start as like, as a new fitness fad. Dr. Seda wasn't like, you know how to build sick biceps. You know, he, right. this started as a therapeutic technology, correct? Yeah. Yes. So like, like the way I, the way I understand it and correct me if I'm wrong or completely off base here, but it was like, like developed as a way of helping people recover from like ACL tears and like going through like physical therapy and recovering at a much higher level. Can you go into that at all? Or correct me if I've said that incorrectly. Well, it, Dr. Sado, his first, his first aha moment was when he put a full body cast on his leg in the seventies. He had fractured his ankle, tore ligaments in his knee. So he had enough testing and playing around that he thought, if I put a judo belt above the cast and crank it down and I do some exercises, maybe I can see two effects, a local effect in the muscle to where it doesn't atrophy and a systemic effect, meaning a hormonal release that'll speed healing. At six weeks, he took the cast off expecting to have to put a new cast on because a cast always moves and slips. Got to put a smaller one on. At six weeks, he had no atrophy of his quad muscle or his hamstring and he's in a cast. And they x-rayed the ankle and it healed in half the time. What did he discover? That he was creating a local disturbance of homeostasis, dropping of oxygen, using of fuel, production of lactic acid that caused an anabolic response in the muscle. Myogenic stem cells turn on and start sucking in protein for protein synthesis, basically, you know, building, building muscle. And the secondary effect of the growth hormone, which was released that stimulated faster healing, specifically it went down in the liver, created the IGF-1 and turned on bone specific alkaline phosphatase and his fracture healed in half the time. We've got athletes, we've healed their fractures in two weeks, two to three weeks fractures healing because we have 
turned on growth hormone and bone specific alkaline phosphatase, not, not working the fracture here, working a non-injured body part. And that's the big thing that is really blowing people's minds is in the rehab and therapy world, that's one world, things are healing twice as fast by turning on growth hormone, by working a non-injured body part. So you're right, Dr. Sato, he used it for therapy and rehab. Then he started using him going for walks. He put it on dogs. He put it on goats. He's got all kinds of studies on bone density, cardiovascular remodeling, varicose veins, brain-derived nootropic factor. I mean, the studies he has are just profound and fascinating. You know, what can be done with this? That is, that is fascinating. So I... I got a client right now, fractured her ankle. Um, so just, I'm gonna ask a totally selfish question here, but like with, for someone like that, fracture ankle, fracture wrist, something extremity, you wrap it, are you putting the, the band up top towards the shoulder, towards the, like towards the hip, or are you putting it like above the, below the knee, below the elbow? We're gonna work a non-injured body part. Nice so you're gonna turning. utilize, like you're gonna utilize, like if she broke her legs, you utilize the arms, to get that exactly. BDNF, to get that uh, growth hormone, and just like basically, again, like you said, biohack the system to create more of this, but not necessarily wrap the injured body part. Is that right? right? So let me give an example that everybody can relate to. Cool. I had a left hip replacement. It took the normal 15 weeks. That's pretty good, 12, 15 weeks of heal. Right hip replacement. After surgery, six hours after surgery, and, and, and I've got a video, everybody can see it. I'm sitting on the edge of my bed and I'm doing little pink dumbbells with my bands on. <laughs> and the nurse comes in and she about loses her mind. <laughs> and, and, and I just said, look, what, what do you need? What do you want? Take my pill. And then I said, get out. You know, she said, I said, just get out. I don't, you know, if, you, if you're going to bug me, just get out of my room or I'll check out the hospital, take your pill. So the Dr. Jim taught me I'm going to work a non-injured body. What happens when you have an injury? You get cortisol and you slow down growth hormone because they work against each other. So anybody who's injured and the pro pro football team are doing this now, Rick Burkhart, Kansas City Chiefs is one of them we're working with, work a non-injured body part as soon as possible. So you fracture your ankle, work your upper body. I've got a three-time the only three discipline world champion in martial arts. His name's Vinnie Ming. He's got three disciplines. He's going for a fourth Chinese kick. He just had labor repair and we have him working his legs and his other arm. And he went back and his surgeon's like, what in the world are you doing? Why are you healing so fast? Growth hormone. We're turning on growth hormone in a body that is probably diminished on growth hormone due to an injury. So that's number one. Number two, as soon as you can start doing rehab, on the injured body part, you follow your doctor or your therapist or your recommendation to the T, you just put the bands on, you know, and you just get a quicker, easier, faster, deeper fatigue and you heal faster. And, and we're seeing minimum 30% improvement in outcomes, 50 to six ACLs back out on the field in four to five months that typically take nine months because they're implementing BFR. So I can tell you this, you go in an NFL, you go in an NFL training room, they're all doing this already. I mean, just about 90% of injuries they deal with BFR is now involved because like you said, Nate, you're turning on growth hormone speed and healing. Well, if you could, if you could actually implement that a little bit faster for Clyde Edwards Hilaire, um, he's got the <laughs> MCL strain. He's sitting on my, yeah. on my fantasy football bench, really yeah. impacting me negatively. You know, that is, would be he, a, is he a Kansas city chief? He is. Well, I can tell you, Burke Holder, who's the head athletic trainer there, he's probably already using it on him. So. All right, all right. <laughs> I'm just playing around. Uh, that's awesome. Okay, so like a lot of people on who are listening to this podcast are busy people, right? They're executives, we're entrepreneurs, you know, we're doing stuff like we got we, this. For most of us, working out isn't as fun for, for them as it is for probably you and I, Mike. Right. So the idea of being able to train in less time and get the same or better results is obviously incredibly appealing. So can you walk us through like someone kind of who's a little more like us looking for a little bit more physique development actually wants to build some muscle. What's the good, a good strategy for them. And then like for someone who's maybe more like my mom kind of in her, in her sixties, not going to really go to hit the gym and like, and pump some crazy iron, but wants to build strength, maintain strength. 
we talk a little bit about like what, what someone like that can do? Can we talk about those two different camps? Yeah, there's three types of people. We got our non-exercise, non-workout people. That's our moms and our, let's put the bands on their legs and find something they like to do. Walk, rebound, elliptical, swim, go up and down the steps, mow the yard, just move and move until you feel the burn. So what do I mean? You're going for a walk and you don't feel the burn. Just stop and do a static squat. Just bend down in a skier position until you feel the burn and then keep going. All you've got to do is figure out what movement do I like to do that creates the burn? Maybe go up and down the steps five times at work or sit up against the wall or get on the elliptical or walk the dog or throw the ball to the kids. All you have to do is put the bands on and feel the burn for about four to five minutes and you're gonna get growth hormone. That's a no brainer. And if you could maybe do some upper body stuff and we give people a free set of exercise tubing, if you could do a little, you know, maybe some arms one day and some other, you know, we got some real simple stuff you can do anywhere. If you could do that two days a week for 10 minutes and three or four days a week, just go do something, movement, swim, you're going to change that you're going to change your whole world i mean you're, you're going to be shocked you're going to have more energy more sex drive you're going to sleep better you're going to tighten up you're going to lean up i mean you're going to turn on growth hormones that's category number one. category by, number and by two. the way let me just jump in here for a second like yeah. this this episode is coming out before christmas so if there's that person in your life that you're like i don't know but maybe you should like i don't know if they to get for them they want to get in better shape they got a lot of stuff going on this could be a great option for someone who's that non-exerciser in your life that you're yes. trying to encourage yeah Exactly. It's a no brainer. It's easy. It's, you know, it's 10 fit group number two. This is your recreational go to the gym four to five times per week. Your runners, your bikers, no change to your protocols. You know what you like to do. You know what you want to do. You go to the gym, you hit the elliptical, you go hit the weights, you run. You, all you do is put the bands on and that buy in time that Nate's talking about that time it takes to get to fatigue. We're going to eliminate 90% of that. You're going to put the bands on and get on the elliptical. You're not going to go for 30 minutes. You're going to fall off that thing at four minutes. Four minutes, you're done. If you got the bands on right, I mean, I'm in elite level aerobic shape because I've done it. I can't go more than four minutes on the elliptical. My legs are trashed. So you're going to, you're going to take away all this buy-in time. It's not going to take you three sets to get to the burn. You're going to get on the first set. So you're going to eliminate dramatically the amount of work. So you're going to cut your time from an hour down to 15 minutes, but you're going to hit a deeper fatigue. Very simple. I tell people if the bands are not on, you're, you're not going to get the same results. It's not possible. So you're going to feel the burn. And then as Nate talked about, it's those last three or four reps you leave on the table. You're not going to, you're not going to have to leave those on the table because it's going to be so easy to get there. And then just, just hang on and feel the burn. That's group number two. Group number three, that's the pros. That's the serious runners, bikers, swimmers, bodybuilders. I teach them alternating workouts. Like for you, Nate, I'd say, Nate, do your normal heavy days and then do a BFR day and then do a normal day and do a BFR. Now, I can't do that. I'm 57. My body can't take it. But if you are still at that level where you you like your hour workouts, you like your 10 mile run, your 20K bike, you do every other workout. What's fascinating about this, to give an example, the USA Olympic weightlifting team, they put them on their junior guys. And I had a call and I had a call with them. And and, the, and I won't mention the doctor's name, <clears throat> but they, they didn't believe in BFR. And I said to them, I said, let me ask you a question. You've, you've got 315 pounds on your shoulder and you're doing your last set of eight. So for everybody out there that does elite level training, when you get to the end, when you stop, because you're lifting a heavy weight, what percentage of fatigue are your fast twitch muscle fibers at? Those are the ones producing, is it at 80? Is it at 95 or is it at 99? If you're pushing 315, you don't stop because there's nothing left in the tank. You stop because there's not enough to push 315 one more time. And your body just, you know, you're dealing with the weight and maybe you got a joint issue. What if at the end that weight was only 100 pounds? 
how much more deeper would you go into the glycogen reservoir of fast twitch muscle activation? That's the difference for the big boys. And how much better are you going to put yourself in a position to win because you're not worried about your spine giving out on rep nine? Yeah. And you can actually stay in the quads. Because when you're asking this question, I was like, it's probably got to be less than 80% for most of us because yeah. most of the time on these big heavy exercises, it's not our legs giving out. It's the, it's the intermediary muscles, the support system. There you go. So what's happening is because you got a lighter weight, you can tap deeper into fast twitch muscle fibers. And here's what, what, it, what really, I think, amazes people like me and you, Nate, and the strength guys. Once the bands have taken the oxygen out of the equation, the aerobic pathway, the slow twitch muscle fibers, they don't have any more fuel. The bands aren't doing anything. They're done. When we're in anaerobic fast twitch muscle fiber activation, we're not using oxygen. We're using glycogen. Bands have nothing to, they just allow us to go get into the fast twitch really fast, really quick with a light weight. Now it's being able to move a light weight that fires fast twitch type 2X muscle fibers, drops all the circulating lactate, lowers the pH in the, to create a metabolic crisis in the muscle and turns on all this anabolic, you know, properties that, that occur. So bottom line with muscle guy runners figuring out is I'm able to go deeper into fast twitch fiber recruitment and that's going to equal change. It's going to be equal explosion or power or speed or hypertrophy, but it's always going to equal change. Two things about that that I like is number one, metabolic crisis should probably be the name of Arnold's next movie. Just a, just a thought. I'm just going to put that out in the universe. Number two, what I, one thing I love about this is that not a single time have you said this is going to be painless. This, so yeah. I think a lot of people think, well, it's too good to be true. This shit is still going to sting. And yeah. that's, and that's the beauty of it is not, there's not, it's not a free pass. It's not a pill. You don't slap on some electrodes and move about your day. You put the bands on and you can get there faster. Most of us yeah. don't ever get there, right? Most of us are too afraid of that, but this gives you a way to be able to do it safely. Cause if you don't have to be curling 40 pounds anymore, you, you can curl 15 pounds and get the same result. Exactly. I think it lets our brains kind of relax and get away from this like feral state uh, or like fear-based response where we're like, am I going to blow out my elbows right now? Cause you're exactly. not, no way you're going to hurt yourself on 15s. So we can get into that pain and experience what that actually feels like to push ourselves into that corner without having to worry about, is my back going to give out? Is my yeah. elbow going to get hurt? Is my shoulders going like, so I, I, I like it. I like that. There's that element there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, this is, this is very cool stuff. Yeah. And well, here's what happens when, when you talk to, and you deal with these people, Nate, when you talk to serious people, you're not going to be able to get them to abandon their training principles. So that's why I came up with this alternating. I might say to you, look, Nate, I know you love your miles. You're a runner. And you, you just, I know you feel like you got to get them, but just give me 30 days and you go do your normal days, but I want half your days and I want you to go a quarter of the distance with the bands on. And here's what's going to happen, Nate. In two weeks, whether you're lifting weights or move, whatever it is you're doing, in two weeks, you're going to be doing your normal workout and your jaw is going to hit the floor because you're going to be like, what in the frick is going on? Why? Why is this? third set of heavy squats feel like nothing why am i why am i not breaking down on my run why do i have more in the tank and then the switch goes off and you go holy holy crap it, it's working i'm fatiguing my body deeper on bfr days and it's translating and that's where the buy-in hits athletes don't buy in if you try and change everything so you got to give them baby steps of bfr and then in about a week or two they go holy cow, look what's happening to me. And then, and then they get it and then, and then they're in forever. So most of my clients aren't really runners, but so like for the kind of like the, the standard issue gym goer, who's looking to add this in, if you're, if, if we're going to be like, okay, I don't really buy it. Dr. Mike sounds very convincing. He's obviously got large biceps. So let me, let me give his method a shot. So we're going right. to do, we're going to do 30 days. We're going to give it a shot. We're not going to abandon our training principles. We're going to give it to every other day BFR. So right. let's say Monday we train chest, International Chest Day, right? On like on Tuesday, then is that also like the same muscle groups you worked the day before? Or are we doing like 
like antagonistic pairings or like what's the, so if matter? you have if you have five workouts in a week week one do your do your normal five week two do the same workout with the third of the weight and the bands on okay so do your do your same workouts don't necessarily go like two a no. day type type right. methodology okay i see what you're saying right. and then so do two things one increase the repetitions it's not eight eight five five it's 30 25 20 10 15 so we're going to failure the, on each of those sets no first set medium burn second set hard burn third set failure fourth set puke type stuff that's if, a good, good soundbite right there number two remember what we're doing when you get this principle we want to eliminate oxygen with the light movements, the higher reps, and force crossover recruitment of fast twitch with the light weight. So we don't want this long rest period between sets. All we do if we rest for 60 seconds is we let the muscle reoxygenate, defeats the purpose. So rest about 20, 30 seconds or combine agonist antagonist. I do biceps and triceps together. So biceps, triceps. Bice, truck. I just no, alternate. No rest, just back and forth. No rest. Love While it. the biceps are getting a little break, I'm on the track. And, and in four minutes, my arms are just toast. And then I do a push and a pull. So on my BFR days, and I only work out three days a week, upper body, I do, I do 16 minutes of upper body three days a week. So I'm working out 48 minutes, and I'm 57. And I do bice, tries, antagonist, and then a push and a pull. And then a shrug and a lateral raise. And I'm done in 16 minutes. And I'm using, heaviest weight I'm using, everyone, is 12 pounds. And, and I, I mean, if you guys are not, if you guys are listening to this and not watching this, Dr. Mike is a big guy. He's got big arms. So 12 pounds weights, like that's, I think that speaks for itself. Yeah. So um, I was going to ask you though about, because you, you brought up like shrugs, upper back muscles, shoulder muscles, are you keeping the bands on in the same place or is there a special place you would put the bands to hit muscle groups that are not in the extremities? Great question. So everybody gets the fact that, hey, distal to the band here, I'm affecting blood flow, but I don't get chest, shoulders back. I don't get it. This is all part of the same highway. This is a major, call it a highway of blood going back to the heart. If we interfere or impede the flow of the arm, that affects the flow of the back, chest, and shoulders to the heart to reoxygenate and get back out. So two principles. If we just have the bands on and pump them up, when we go to do chest, shoulders, and back, you're going to notice that you're going to fatigue quicker, but there's a better way. If you're going to do chest, shoulders, and back, you want to pre-fatigue. You want to prime the pump by doing arms. You can either blast your arms first, let them rest for a minute or two, and then go do the chest. Or you can just do one quick set and get the burn going and then jump into your chest, back, and shoulders. But either way, we're priming the pump, which is going to reduce available oxygen. And I tell people, if you don't believe me, Go do two or three sets of arms and then drop down and do some push-ups. Watch how fast your shoulder, your check your pecs light up. Or do some lateral raises with like three pounders. You'll be shocked. Your shoulders will be on fire. All we're doing, okay, is we're reducing available oxygen. Okay, that's all we need to do to have the effects of BFR. Remember, once we use more oxygen than is flowing. We're using oxygen in the seven, it's only flowing in the six. The slow twitch muscle fibers, they get out of the way really quick. 20, 30, 40 seconds, you're feeling the burn. The burn is your indicator that you're crossing over. You're still firing some slow twitch, but now you're in fast twitch type 2A. And if you keep going, and you have to keep going, because if you don't keep going, you don't get two X fibers, the glycolic pathway, the big bad boys, that's where all the magic happens. That's why I tell people, when you feel the burn, step on the gas pedal, don't back off. Even if you're a grandma, you're going for a walk, grandma, you feel the burn, keep going, pick up the pace, walk up the hill a little bit, do a squat, you know, you know, live in that burn a little bit and, and you're, gonna turn, you're gonna turn it all on. Is it, you're giving me some great sound bites here. 
Yeah, live in that burn, Grandma. Come on, let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so when I, whenever I was like previous to this conversation, Doctor Mike, and I thought about BFR training, I thought a lot about occlusion, holding right. the blood inside that like particular muscle belly to facilitate more, more like have like having nutrient dense blood feeding the muscles like in the moment. So what you're what it sounds like though when you're talking about chest, shoulders, back, you're not going to get quite the occlusion element, but you're still getting like a little bit of blood flow restriction because of the pathway. And then you're yep. also elevating mTOR, IGF-1, growth hormone, and all the other things that are going to allow your allow you to facilitate more muscle growth and recovery. Is that am I on the right path there? Yep. See, we think occlusion. Occlusion doesn't do anything. Really? Occlusion is simply eliminating oxygen. Without exercise that uses oxygen. It doesn't matter if we take your 10 flow rate down to a two or a five, or it's irrelevant. You have to, and everybody's different. Me and you, Nate, will be, you might be operating at 60% occlusion. I might be operating 80%, meaning reduction of 60% flow. But you might be doing a little more work than I'm doing. There's a million combinations of this here. Lower the oxygen with the bands, do enough work to use more oxygen and feel the burn and then stay in the burn. That's all it is. And there's a million combinations. Our bands, the reason everybody loves them is number one, it's not a tourniquet. We're the only ones, this is a patent. You'll look here, when I blow this up, there are air chambers there, individual air chambers. So it's not a tourniquet. It's not a complete squeeze. It's like a bunch of pressure points pushing around the arm. These bands cannot cut off blood flow. More important, these bands do not affect arterial pressure. What does that mean? We're the only ones that have studied this. That means the deep inflow, the artery, which is really deep, that's the one we don't wanna mess with. We don't wanna, we don't wanna mess with the arterial inflow. Our bands, when studied, did not not only did not interfere with that inflow, it did not increase arterial pressure, meaning the pressure the heart's needed to getting the inflow hasn't changed. And then back at the heart, we studied back at the heart. The heart isn't under any additional oxygen demand, which means if we're doing this correctly, right here in my arm, I got an oxygen mismatch here. But what's going back and getting to the heart is no different than any other exercise. It's just deoxygenated blood. It's gonna move over to the lungs and it's gonna come back out and go back out. Which means we are not putting anybody at a cardiovascular risk. You might have clots, you might have atherosclerosis, high blood pressure, pacemaker, cardio, you know, obstructive cardiopulmonary disease. Look, if you can go for a walk, if you can do exercise, you can put the bands on and that's why we are such so far ahead in the industry is because of this special design we've got to make this safe, safe for kids. I mean, we got 90 year old women who are, you know, reversing bone density. That's a whole different topic. That, that's, that's incredible. So I, I was going to bring this up because if you go and just like, if someone's listening to this episode and they're like, sounds good. And they type into Amazon BFR, there's a million different options. You can get something yeah. for like $10. Yeah. But all those methods are all tourniquet based. They're all ten, like complete tension around the arms. And if you were, if you're not watching this, the way Dr. Mike, Mike described it when he held it up was that each of these, each of the sections of the B3 bands have an, a separate air pocket in it. So it provides rather than like mm -hmm. wrapping pressure, actual like pressure points, that's going to keep you safe. If you're dealing with any like contraindications or different conditions. So if you are dealing with atherosclerosis, which is my, one of the hardest words to say ever, yeah. high blood pressure, anything like that, then don't, don't cheap out on these. Make sure you're going with the right, with the right bands that's, not gonna, that's going to allow you to get the results without necessarily putting you at risk for anything else. So yes. I'm really glad we brought up kind of like the tension as well. And, that, and do, do those automatically inflate or do you squeeze them by hand? So the next thing is, is they have a manual pump and right on the band, we tell you the number to pump up to. So when you put it on, let's say you start at 200, Nate, you know that you start at 200 and you're maybe one or two minutes into your workout. And you're like, man, I'm not feeling the burn. And we teach you, hey, put, you know, hook it back up, hook up, put 250 in it. And then you go 
oh wow, there it is. You know your number. It's consistent. You 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 strap on a wrap or a strap. You have no idea what the pressure is. It, this you're going to dial in the pressure and be safe. So for example, on my left arm, three fifty. My right arm, two seventy five. That's just that's my perfect number. It only took me three workouts to figure that out. And now you got your perfect number that you can pump it up to. Next, most bands you can't even get on. I mean, a lot of people can't see me here, but this band, I'm putting it on, I'm strapping it down, I'm hooking up the pump, and I'm pumping it up to 200. That took me eight seconds and I'm ready to go. I've tried four different type, types of bands other than B3, and they are not as easy to set up as, as you just yeah. made it look. So yeah, yeah, that's good to know. Um, so Dr. Mike, this has been like incredibly informative, um, honestly, like super exciting. Like the idea that like that there's actually new technology emerging. Like I know there's a lot of people who are like, oh, weightlifting is a waste of time, <clears throat> Dr. John Jackie. Um, but right. that, uh, that like, they, they seem to like play on people's insecurities and be like, you don't have to do anything hard, hard work. All you got to do is just this light thing. But I love that this is based off of a therapeutic technology that is shown to be having a ton of other effects that you can oh, yeah. absolutely use as a, as an Olympic level elite athlete, as a 90 year old grandma who needs some extra bone density and as, and tons of applications all in the middle. So how can we find out more about this? How can we follow you? Like where, like if we want to, if we want to learn more, because I know that like now that we've kind of turned people's mind on to just right. like seeing BFR, it's going to start appearing more often. Right. Right. So they want to go out and do two things. One, go, you know, just look online for B3, the letter B, the number three sciences on the website. When you go to the website, there's a four minute video, but under that video, there are 20 topics. Thyroid health, blood sugar health, build muscle. Seniors can do it. Kids, you know, speed training, um, immune health, lose weight, obesity, rehab, pain. You're, one of those 20 topics is going to be exactly what you're looking for. And when you click on that, I, I have done another video of eight to 12 minutes, and I'll teach you why this is going to help you with thyroid health. And I'm going to present the science. Everything I'm going to say is back on science. So how I've made this different is everyone's different. You got different ideas, things you want to do, Nate, than me. We've created this website where you've got all these topics. So if you're, your big things, you know, insulin resistance, which by the way, we can fix that in one day. If you want to have that topic, it's fascinating. It'll be a one minute conversation. If you got blood sugar problems, you better go watch this video because you can solve it in one day. And, and I've done the video and I've explained it. So, I mean, if you got time, Nate, that one's a a facet that blows people's mind when they hear this. I'm big. I'm big into helping people fix insulin resistance. I never, I, I don't fix it in a day though. So I'm, I gotta go check this out, but it sounds yeah. like there's a lot of good resources on there. Stuff that like way beyond the scope of the podcast even discussed. So if you have questions about it, go to b3sciences.com. And if you're looking to pick up a set of B3 bands, check out, there's a, there'll be a link in the show notes to do so. But uh, Dr. Mike, if someone's interested in kind of following you um, besides the B3 website, where else, where else are you, do you exist? Well, I, you know, I would tell them to go to Facebook. We got a Facebook group called I am B3, I am B3, where we've got hundreds of people posting all kinds of things. So you can see every story out there. You can see the bodybuilders and the grandmas and the moms. And then we've also got a YouTube channel where you can follow our videos. So, I mean, if you just look it up, you're going to find, you know, something that's, that, that's going to really help you, you know, with your exercise and maybe what you're dealing with or the challenges you're having. Cool. And I'll throw this all the stuff in the show notes as well. So that way you don't have to go like Google it yourself. But Dr. Mike, thank you so much for being on the show, just delivering such a wealth of knowledge. This was incredible. And I'm so excited to see the potential and the, and the outcomes that like that, the BFR technology is going to bring to health and fitness in the coming decades. Yeah. Awesome. It was great to have you on. Maybe in the future, we can, you know, you can have me back. If you got any specific topics, I'd love to come back. I think we're gonna have to do another one talking just about insulin resistance. Yeah. Yeah. That's a fascinating one. I wish, wish we had more time because there's so many people dealing with that and they just don't understand exercise in the glycogen reservoir. Awesome. Yeah, man. All right. Well, that's, that's the teaser for next episode with Dr. Dr. Mike, keep your eyes open. We're going to be going, going live on that one very soon. Dr. Mike, have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being okay. here. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for having me on.